Hello and welcome to Wall Street Training's LBO Leverage Buyout Overview course. Please note that these materials are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced for any reason without express written consent from Wall Street Training. Here's a list of reasons why you might want to go private. Typically, LBO requires the buy-in of the management team, hence, by the way, LBOs are sometimes considered MBOs for management buyouts because you absolutely need the management team to go there and run the company or bring in your own management team because you do not want to be running a portfolio company because you have, let's say, several, several of these portfolio companies. You're not going to be able to allocate the time that's required to run the day-to-day -day operations. Hence, the reason why the management team is absolutely critical. Let's go into several reasons why LBOs are done. First of all, the public markets are not pro properly rewarding a company's true or intrinsic value. In this case, for instance, during the dot-com internet bubble, the quality, quote-unquote, old economy stocks were ignored and punished unnecessarily. In that case there, you might see that a lot of these firms realizing there's a lot of internally generated cash flows, the valuations are depressed. We'll talk about the ideal LBO candidate in a second, and therefore the private equities might want to come in. Lack of a strategic fit with the parent company. A company may want to divest their non-core assets. Well, there's a perfect opportunity to do a leverage buyout there and take it in-house within the management team. Similarly, there might be a lack of attention from the headquarters of the parent company, and therefore, there's a little bit of disgruntledness, and that subsidiary might decide to say, listen, I want to get myself out and I can grow if I have the right resources. Hence, the parent company might decide to say, nope, don't want that, or it's not priority right now. Regulatory issues, antitrust dynamics. Many times you have consolidated entities in an M&A who might be uh, forced to divest a part of the business so that they will not get too big, all due to antitrust dynamics. For smaller middle market companies, perhaps, or privately held companies, a significant shareholder or owner might decide to retire, and this way, this will pave the way for existing management team to potentially own the business through a leveraged buyout. And let's now take a look at the ideal LBO candidate. First of all, as we mentioned already, you must have an experienced management team. A strong CEO and CFO are absolutely critical. Why? Because the CEO is supposedly supposed to provide the strategy and the strategic direction, whereas the CFO is the numbers person. And therefore, they are, they are the ones uh, who are probably among the most critical, as well as, of course, making sure that the uh, company is intact. So COO, sales, et cetera, marketing, all obviously very critical as well. Financial profile, this is pretty, pretty important. The company must, must have an ability to generate a steady stream of cash flows. If the cash flows are not there, nobody's going to buy the company. Why not? The private equity firms need to make sure that there's steady cash flow to pay off the debt so that their equity stake does not go to nil. The banks, the ones providing the leverage and the debt, they want to make sure that they can get repaid, so there must, once again, be a steady stream of cash flows. This is probably one of the most important attributes of an ideal LBO candidate. Why? Because these cash flows must fund the operations and continue to pay down the debt. In con conjunction with that, there must be low debt balances, or there ideally would be a low debt balance. Why? Because therefore, additional leverage, additional leverage can be employed on this LBO. If you're already fully tapped out, if you're already fully tapped out and you can't do much additional with your capital structure, that's going to be a potential problem here because if you already can't borrow additional funds to fund this leverage buyout by definition, you might have a, a, a little bit of a problem there. High cash balances are ideal as well. Why is high cash balance? Because that, first of all, offsets the debt, but also you can use the cash clearly to actually pay for the actual leverage buyout acquisition. In com combination with all these, you must also have a relatively cheap valuation. Why must you have a relatively cheap valuation? This way, if the public markets are undervaluing this particular entity and this firm, you can now go in there and you don't have to pay as much than if it were already fairly or overvalued. And therefore, from the perspective of the financial profile, it is very important to make sure you have all four of these components as much as you can. Also, there must be sufficient assets for collateral. Why? Because if it can be backed by assets, what you can do is the banks are going to be able to come in and be more comfortable loaning you the money. Because at the end of the day, banks being slightly more conservative than, let's say, the private equity folks, not necessarily the case, but generally speaking, they want their assets back as soon as possible. And if the company is not able to generate the cash flows, they want to know that their collateral is going to be worth something. And of course, you have industry factors that also influence 
operating risk? Do you have a uh, competitive advantage over your competitors? Do you have a stable growth of demand? Is there high barriers to entry? What are the trends and regulation impact on operations? All of these are key items to determine whether or not you have a good company here that's a good potential LBO candidate.